Hello and welcome to the channel. Kenneth Okonkwo, actor, com lawyer, com politician, and the spokesperson of the Labour Party, has labelled President Bola Akmetinyubu incompetent, adding that had Peter Obi removed fuel subsidy, the price of petrol would not have skyrocketed. Details shortly. Subscribe, like, share and comment thank you if peter or b had removed subsidy there would not be a hike in fuel price says kenneth okonkwo actor com politician kenneth okonkwo has shared his thoughts on the removal of fuel subsidy implemented by the president bola tinubu administration after the removal of the subsidy, price of fuel has gone as high as after, after the removal of the subsidy, price of fuel has gone as high as six hundred naira per liter, which has subsequently led to a hike in the price of transportation and foodstuffs. This has led to various backlash from Nigerians on the Tinubu's administration. However, some political analysts have insisted that Tinubu should not be blamed for the hike in fuel price due to subsidy removal as it was the right move to make. Sharing his thoughts on the situation, Okonkwo argued that if the right thing was done while removing the subsidy as stated by his principal, Peter Obi, the price of fuel would not have skyrocketed. Speaking via Twitter, Okonkwo noted that the leaders in the helm of power are incompetent and do not know how to manage the economy. According to him, if you do the right thing while removing oil subsidy, the price will come down. The bunch of dishonest and incompetent leaders we have do not know how to manage the economy, and they are punishing innocent Nigerians with oil price hike in the name of subsidy removal. Meanwhile, the presidential candidate of Labour Party LP, Peter Hobby, has expressed sadness over the massive bloodshed and killings in northern Nigeria, particularly in Plateau, Sokoto, Zamfara, and Benue states. In a statement via his verified Twitter page on Monday, Obi said the continued horrible spate of all forms of criminality in the four states is very depressing and extremely worrisome. The former governor of Anambra state said the fatalities recorded are not just numbers, but wastages of sacred human lives of people who lived among family members, relatives, and friends. While appreciating the efforts of governments at all levels and security agencies, or be appealed to them to do more and immediately arrest the situation before it deteriorates further. He said, the continued horrible spate of all forms of criminality, especially visceral bloodletting and killings, as witnessed recently in Plateau, where over 120 people were killed, 50 killed in Sokoto, 31 in Zamfara, and 25 in Benue, are very depressing and extremely worrisome. These fatalities are not just numbers, but wastages of sacred human lives of peoples who lived among us as family members, relatives, and friends. While appreciating the efforts of governments at all levels and security agencies, I respectfully appeal that they do more to arrest the situation before it deteriorates further. Governments and security agencies must not allow the nation to continue this drift toward anarchy. I sincerely commiserate with the affected families. May God grant eternal rest to the dead. Over 120 people were recently killed in Plateau State, while 50 persons were killed in Sokoto and 31 people were killed in Zamfara. Also, 35 persons were murdered in Benue states by killer headsmen. Subscribe, like, share, comment, and please turn the notification bell on. Thank you. In other news, Labour Party presidential candidate Peter Hobi continued his case before the presidential election petition court in Abuja on Monday, presenting further presidential election results from eight different states. Accepted as evidence by the Justice Aruna Samani-led panel, 
the results from Ebonyi, Nasarawa, Delta, Kaduna, Imo, Ondo, Sokoto, and Kogi states we examined. Various numbers of local government areas, LGAs, results from each state were presented, ranging from seven local government areas in Sokoto to 26 local government areas in Himo. These were hallmarked as exhibits. Obi, who placed third in the presidential election won by President Bola Tinibu of the All Progressives Congress, vowed to bring additional exhibits to the court to support his claims of rigged elections. Obi's lawyer, Patrick Iqueto spoke about a fresh application to be presented at the next adjournment and apologized for the late submission of documents they plan to present in court. However, APC's counsel, Prince Latif Agbemi, expressed frustration at this, criticizing the petitioner's disregard for the pre-hearing report's requirement to file and serve documents at least 24 hours before the hearing. Specifically, or B and the Labour Party are challenging the validity of President Tinubu's victory. They maintain that Tinubu was not qualified to run due to previous legal issues and that his running mate, Shetima, was, sti was still the nominated candidate for his senatorial election. Furthermore, they argue that the election was invalid due to corrupt practices and non compliance with the Electoral Act. The petitioners request the court to declare that all votes for Tinibu and the APC were wasted due to his non-qualification. They want either a declaration that OB won based on the remaining votes or an order for a fresh election where Tinibu, Shetima and the APC will not participate. Also, Peter Obi appealed to the new governor of Abia State, Alex Oti, to focus on delivering good governance to the people of the state. Obi made the appeal during the Thanksgiving service of Oti after his inauguration on May 29. Sharing photos of the event via Twitter, the former governor of Anambra State said many people in Abia have been subjected to untold hardship. He urged Oti to highly prioritize programs and policies on health education, and pulling people out of poverty. Peter Obi also expressed optimism that in the next four years, the residents of the state will be happy like they are today. That's the news, guys. Thanks for listening. Until next time, bye.